so one of the things that we've been asked on the I Bought a Farm podcast is uh, do we do any analysis before we, we buy a farm? And Jared and I may differ a little bit on this, but, but one of the things that I wanted to cover um, is talk about a property that I bought um, this year. I closed on it this year, but I, I made the offer last year. And one of these things that I'm gonna try to get to the point of this fairly quick, but this might be a little longer video, is uh, I do an entire breakdown on the property based on listing price and features before I even step foot on it. Uh, in fact, this is labeled uh, November 6th. Um, and I believe I didn't see that property until the 7th or 8th. Um, and the reason I do that is there's no use going and, and looking at a property and falling in love with a property or getting excited about a property until you can understand that you can afford that property. Um, and, and not just afford it in terms of I can pay the down payment and I can pay the mortgage payments, but also what's your end goal with it? Is it a forever property? Is it something you expect your kids uh, to inherit and hunt at some point? Or in my case, this was to do that stuff for three to five years and then to sell it as an investment property and then do it all over again. Um, so uh, this property was listed on um, 11.5 for uh, $400,000. Um, that was the list price, 11.5, and in this market, it is pretty hot to trot. I'm gonna break down just a few different features of it. It's a total of 130 acres. Um, and I apologize if you can't see this that well. I'll try to maybe use a different color here. Uh, it has one house, um, which is an older farmhouse on it, and it has one cabin, which is a cinder block uh, deer camp, basically. Um, the cool thing is about this property is this house uh, is being rented, right? So um, I'm purchasing the property and that renter wants to stay on the property. Uh, I can let them stay or I could take them off of that property and put it back on the market um, for simplicity's sake. And this person had been in there for almost 30 years or over 30 years, uh, just let them stay, right? So we've got some rental income here. Um, the total, uh, so if you take these out and you take this house probably plus uh, an acre out, right? I've got 129 acres um, of other ground, right? And that includes this cabin. Of that is approximately 10 acres of tillable. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second. And then basically the, the other 119 acres uh, is timber. Okay. So that's, that's kind of the basis of the property when I'm looking at this. Um, the cool thing is on this, it's been in the same family for over 30 years. Um, so in the last 30 years, uh, there's been no timber cut, right? That's a big one for me uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, I'm looking at buying a property and wanting security on that property. When I say security, it's financial security. So. If uh, I run into tough times, the economy tanks, I need money, where are, are my securities? If I buy a uh, 150 acre brushy, awesome deer hunting piece of ground, I could sell it, but it's not that liquid, right? It's gonna take time to get that off the market and get cash in my hands. Um, there's not a whole lot else I can get out of a big piece of brushy ground. With this, I've got timber, uh, and with current market timber prices, I could get somebody in there to cut and generate income for me pretty quick. So this is a security piece for me. And the fact that nobody had cut timber in at least 30 years um, tells me that there's probably some timber that can be taken out in a selective harvest now, but in the next 10 to 15 years, there's gonna be some prime timber. And we'll talk about how that affects my thinking in a second. Um, okay, the other big thing that this uh, property came with is equipment. Um, the landowner uh, had a fairly new um, 40 plus horse Kubota tractor on there, had a tiller, a uh, brush hog, um, a grader, and I think that, that's it, those three uh, pieces. So between the tractor and and implements, 
that gives me something that um, I can run with pretty quickly. Uh, we'll talk about how I was thinking about that in. Okay, so this is kind of the basis of how this house set up. Hopefully you can see this yellow a little bit better. 400,000 was list, 130 total acres, house that was being rented, cabin, 129 acres of then land, of which 119 was timber, 10 acres of tillable. Now, the first thing you might ask is like, well, are you gonna lease that tillable out as that ground? I'm not. Uh, the county that I'm in here, I'm not gonna generate very much money. And as a deer hunter, that tillable ground in the bottoms is extremely valuable for big food sources. So this is for me. Um, I may have somebody take some hay off this spring, but I'm not even gonna charge them. If anything, I'm just gonna try to build that neighborly relationships uh, up by letting them have uh, the hay ground for the spring and then I'll, I'll plant in the summertime. Timber side, uh, again, I'm not looking to cut. Uh, if you're familiar with how tax laws work, if you go in and sell timber in the first year that you buy the property, you're gonna pay short-term capital gains, which is based on income tax brackets. Uh, you don't want that. After a year, you fall into the long-term capital gains brackets. That may change in terms of how those percentages work out, but for now, that's how you're gonna to wanna to look at that timber. So. Uh, I do expect to do a selective cut at some point prior to selling the property, but I also expect to leave a lot of really good timber for the next buyer uh, because that's going to be a big point of sale for me. Okay, uh, what I ended up closing, and again, I told you guys that I'm super transparent about this. Uh, I ended up buying this property for 370 k okay? So I basically saved $30,000 off the list price. I made a pretty aggressive move on it. Um, same day, same, same day offer, uh, and good terms to close. Uh, what I had to bring down because of my finances, uh, basically the, the loan to value ratio from the ag credit union I was using is 80%, which means I need to have 20% and a down payment, right? So that's 74K. That's where a lot of us get stuck. That is a large sum of money. Um, I will say that I'm still learning the best ways to do that. That's a lot of cash. If you can figure out ways to generate line of credits, uh, especially if you are doing an investment property in a three to five year flip, uh, a line of credit is likely going to be better. You could pay interest only on that. I know nobody likes interest, but the fact is that you're saving that lump sum of cash. Um, and then when you sell the property, you pay off your line of credit. Yes, you've paid interest on it, but um, cash is king. And, and I think that nobody would argue with that, especially in today's inflation times. Um, the thing that I didn't mention here is I did have to put 6K in an escrow account, right? That was my earnest money. So essentially to show good faith to the uh, current landowner that I was a serious buyer and that I was going to close, 6K here, which then you know took this number down to 68K at closing. Now, what the other thing is, is all your closing fees and things like that. I'm not going to get into that right now because I didn't look at that. But, you know, give or take, that's another uh, four to six thousand dollars at closing. And right? so you're talking about 72 to 74 K. Uh, and frankly, I don't even have that number on me right now. But I can tell you at some point, if you want, private message us. OK, so why did I think that this was a good investment? Um, here's number one, which was really cool is there's about uh, 17 to 20K in equipment ready to go on the property. Now my plan, I already have a tractor and equipment. I've used it to manage a bunch of properties. My plan is to eventually sell this stuff. In fact, I've already had offers. Uh, my real estate agent offered to buy that thing right away. It's low hours, very well maintained. Um, I am actually gonna plan on using it this spring and summer, and then I will likely sell it going into the fall and then from that point on, uh, just move my own tractor. The reason I'm going to keep it there is I just don't have to haul my tractor back and forth, especially with gas, gas prices approaching $5 a gallon. Uh, nobody wants to have to do that stuff. So this right here is huge because what this does is it helps me justify that down payment cost, right? If all of a sudden I can recuperate 33% of my down payment cost almost instantaneously, that's huge. That's a very, very nice thing. Uh, a lot of people said, hey, how do you convince your wife uh, to go with you or, or to, 
to agree to purchase and invest property, we're going through it right now. I'm literally working out the numbers so that her and I are on a complete understanding of what I see in the property. Um, it's all about numbers and they have to make sense. You guys are a team, husband and wife, it's joint finances. Make sure she's on board and make sure you're clear and realistic in these cases. So, in fact, I think I could probably get 25 to 27,000 right now, but I'm gonna say 20K uh, just to be conservative and then hopefully I make more on that. Uh, number two is this house right here. So I get a small amount of rent, about 400 bucks a month uh, on my rent. It's a very old farmhouse. Uh, she's lived in it for 30 years, um, but this is something. This helps, helps offset some of my mortgage, which is really nice. So if you think about it, I'm making approximately, let's say five, uh, 5K per year um, in rent. Uh, so that's an income, right? That's an income from my, my farm, my property. What I would like to do at some point, uh, I'm gonna keep running it, I don't plan on changing that, is I wanna put in, oh, about 10 to 15K into this farmhouse. I wanna carve out this acre with it. So I'm gonna survey that house and that acre out. And then I wanna sell that. Um, and my projected sell on that property, I'll tell you in one second is about 80 to 85K, which some of you may say, well, that's not a lot. I valued this thing between around 55 um, when I bought it. So I'm looking to make 25 to 35, uh, or 25 to $30,000 when I flip that house. Um, that could be a year from now, could be three years from now, could be five years from now, it just depends on the market. And uh, I don't plan on changing that renter's structure at any time. Uh, another place that I look to make some money is the cabin. Uh, my goal here is to put, oh, about 10 into this cabin. Right now I have it valued at 20, but I think it could be valued closer to 50. Uh, and the reason it being is it's super raw, but it's a really nice structure. There's a walk-in cooler that they built behind it. Um, there's a lot of value in this because what my plan will be in th for three to five years is to sell this cabin with this property, meaning a cabin on 129 acres separate from the house. In fact, I think one of the reasons I was able to get this deal done is because I was willing to take that old farmhouse and that acre um, all under a single purchase. I think a lot of people didn't want to have to deal with that house and I understand why. But my goal was to get this deal done. I will survey that out at some point and sell that parcel off. And then I've got a cabin and 29 acre, 129 acres. And if uh, anybody's bought property as an absentee landowner, they know the value of a structure on that side. So that was another big one uh, on that end. Recoup number two um, or three is the timber right here, right? I plan on doing a selective cut uh, under this thing you know, that could put me somewhere in that 35 to 55 K that I could get off my property. The thing is, is there's way more value here in the next 10 to 15 years uh, on the mature timber uh, left over. And why there's a big value there is there's a lot of big white oak on these ridges. So I'm going to take a selective cut out of that, um, get, a, get a trusted forester in there to really mark the timber that I want to take out. And then part of the advantage of selling in three to five years is with knowing that somebody's gonna have some unbelievably mature timber in 10 to 15 years to be able to harvest. Uh, one of the last pieces here is just why I'm buying this property overall, which is the recreational value. Um, my goal is to improve this property with food, with access, um, with TSI, uh, obviously taking off some mature timber to get some thicker areas, but really to release those big mature trees for 10 to 15 years from now. Overall, my goal is to increase the recreational value of that property, and that coincides with land appreciation. Uh, if you look at it right now, land is appreciating every year, you know, five, six percent in some cases. And so my goal is to hold this thing for up to five years, depending on the market, uh, improving that rec value, and then based off of that, having the ability to gain you know, somewhere between 60 and 75K um, in terms of a return on that side. So when you start to add up all of these numbers here, 
you can see why I looked at this property as a really good investment property. And you can use some of these same uh, techniques to potentially break down a property that you're looking at. First things are, what does that property have? What is the value? It doesn't have to be income producing. We hear that a lot as people say, well, I need an income producing property. If you look at this thing, here's what I'm producing per year right now, five grand. No other income producing on that property. It's just not. My understanding is where is the value on this property in the next three to five years? And then where is the extended value when I sell that thing out? So just something to keep in mind, but uh, we had a bunch of questions after the first I bought a farm. I really wanted to give you guys a good breakdown on this. Um, keep asking questions. Uh, by no means are Jared and I a complete expert in this, but you can kind of get my way of thinking. And then when I add all of these things up, that's the discussion I'm able to have uh, with my wife and say, here's why I think this is a good investment for us. Um, and thus we pulled the trigger. So what will be interesting and hopefully you guys will stick with us is over the next three to five years, how many of these things actually start to come to fruition um, and, and hit our marks or exceed our marks. Um, we're committed to it. And the other thing again is, is kind of a priceless thing for me is the opportunity for my family to now enjoy this property from a recreational side over the next three to five years while I'm working to make it a better investment. So hope you guys like this uh, little breakdown. Again, continue to ask questions, comments um, on, on what you see. And uh, you know, hopefully we're learning as much as you guys are on the new I Bought a Farm. We'll have an episode number two coming up here soon. And uh, yeah, keep the questions coming. Thanks guys. If you enjoyed listening to this episode of the I Bought a Farm podcast, make sure you check it out every other Thursday night on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and any other place that you might find your favorite podcast.